Hello everyone, and welcome back to this month's video. Recently, I came across an old creative writing journal that I had used back in high school when I was in 10th grade and took creative writing as an elective course. And I was looking for something else. And you know how it goes, you're looking for one thing, but then you find another. Well, I came across my old journal that I had used for writing prompts and you know, there's feedback from the teacher from <clears throat> who taught the class and everything. So I was looking through it and I thought, why not make this a video? Because, you know, this was nearly 10 years ago. You know, my first prompt starts January 25th of 2010. And I just thought it was really fascinating, really interesting to see, you know, what I wrote 10 years ago based on, you know, pictures that she would show us and we'd have to create like a short story or, or a prompt or something that kind of went with that photo. And it was really interesting to see what other students wrote. However, it's more fascinating about what was going on in my mind 10 years ago. Um, so I thought I'd just read a few of my favorites that I enjoyed writing and then enjoyed rereading re a couple. Uh, for my first uh, rereading, this was written March 15th, 2010, and the title of the prompt is called Journal Painting of a Woman. So I assume that, I think she had like one of those overhead projectors. Um, where she showed like a picture and then in bullet points I have four things written down and as I'm looking at this woman I deduce if you will four things about her she's lonely she's cold she's lost she needs help finding her way home so I assume it was probably like a really depressing picture maybe you know I was sad that day or something and that I kind of came up with this so <clears throat> without further ado uh, this is written from her perspective as well. It's not written from my perspective. This is the woman in the painting, you know, feeling all these different emotions, cold, lost, lonely, and then this is what's going through her mind. <clears throat> I cannot believe he left me. It was three days ago, yet it, it felt he just left me. My heart and soul ache to see his beautiful face, feel his hand through mine, and hear his deep voice with its catchy laugh rippling through the room. But I'm right here in a park waiting. I feel as dull as the leaves around me. Worthless piles of leaves surround me. It becomes chilly, and I try to dress as bright as Autumn herself, yet I do not feel as cheerful. He said he would be back, so I wait on this bench, feeling the wind sweep across my face and think of how we first met here. I dearly hope my heart won't turn cold like the winter. Why did he have to go, and for so long? Losing him for a week is like a year without air. I wish I had him in my arms, but I am here, turning into an iceberg, weeping silent tears and staring at autumn's festivities around me. No longer can I stand such loneliness. My heart belongs to him, but how do I know if he loves me, if he promises to take care of me? Maybe when he comes back, he will bring a beautiful ring and I won't have to feel so depressed anymore. Then I can breathe again. And the prompt ends there. Um, because I think we only had like 10 or... Mm, it was like five to ten minutes per prompt that we'd have to write at the beginning of the class so it kind of stops there and then it goes on to a different story on a different day but <clears throat> there are little markings i don't know if you can see where the teacher at the time wrote uh her feedback and some of it says and i can't read cursive very well you've created a strong voice here i mean i guess <laughs> and it says really beautiful lines jen which is what she Written down. I kind of look at it now and I think it's kind of cheesy. Like maybe I was in, I was into like sappy romance novels and movies for a while. So I wonder if it was during this time too that <clears throat> um, maybe I was trying to feel as the character, but I was like really thinking about the characters in the movie and maybe how they express things um, throughout the movie. Um, but there are some things that I do like. I like how you know I go from like comparing autumn to winter like. Oh, like I've tried to dress as bright as Autumn herself because I love Autumn. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. I love all the colors that come through. But then when winter comes and everything kind of dies down and it gets colder and everything, like, you know, that's how she feels right now. She's like cold as winter, even though you know, it's still Autumn. So <clears throat> I don't know who the he was. I don't know why I thought of that. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, so then I can breathe again, I guess, like, you know, feeling, like, cold and everything, that once he comes back with a beautiful ring, don't really need that, but okay, 
you know, once he comes back with this, then, you know, everything that she feels inside, she can just let go and, like, be with him, you know, once he comes back and hopefully wants to be with her. So it would be cool if I could rewrite this. I would write from his perspective what he was thinking. And then, I don't know if I'd have them meet up again or not, <clears throat> but that would be something pretty cool. Like, maybe he's going through something and he doesn't want her to catch on or, or something like that. That would be very interesting to see and rewrite, you know, 10 years past all that. Like, you know, what was he thinking during this time? The second prompt I wanted to share, I had written uh, a few weeks later on March 22nd, 2010. And the title of the prompt is, I met him on the stairs. <clears throat> and I met him on the stairs. He was a dashing looking fellow with soft brown hair, a royal blue navy suit, and soft brown eyes. But here I was in a short blue summer dress showing my knobby knees and no shoes. My hair was probably all over the place and damp too since I just came back from swimming in the lake with Lucy and Jocanna. But as he stood there in the sunlight, glowing and handsome, looking like a prince, my heart beat faster and I felt my cheeks turn as red as apples. Clara, I heard my father's military voice call out from behind me, go upstairs and change out of that disgusting outfit. I blushed even harder. My father wished I acted 18 instead of five. As I passed him on the stairs, I saw his eyes twinkle and his smile sigh. As I shut the door in my bedroom, and found my white spring dress, I could hear snatches of conversation through the wall. Good girl, loves to play, fine young lady, just get to know her. I then blew my bangs out from my face as I reached for my brush. Father is at it again, marrying me off to one of his soldiers so he can keep the estate himself. But it wasn't his fault mother died so long ago. He was a lot of fun back then, but now he could become a pain. All he wanted was grandchildren. Braving myself up, <clears throat> I opened my door to only see him there. He smiled, then held out his hand. Allow me to introduce myself, he said. I am Jacob, Jacob Leviti, commander of the US-22. I nodded. Oh yes, one of father's friends. You may call me Clara, I said, but ignored his hand. And it's He laughed, and it sounded like a bell ringing through a silent meadow. All right. Since you don't believe in military men's style, may I lead you to some place? He walked me down the stairs to the back porch. He wasn't very chatty, yet I'm sure he has trouble keeping women off him with his looks. A maid came bearing lemonade and sugar cookies. I could feel his eyes on me as I tried to dain daintily bite the cookie. He then told me of his career. Whenever he saw a bored look in my eyes, he would speed up and say something funny. And it kind of ends there. Well, it does end there. So that was just something, I guess my mind was all over the place. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple things. She said nice detail, nice natural, I think it says revelation of background or something. And then there's an underline between the lemonade and the cookie part. I guess I want a lemonade and cookie. But yeah, I came up with some interesting names. Like, because, you know, you had such a short amount of time, you kind of had to come up with names at the top of your head, which I'm not very good at even to this day, 10 years ago. I'm still not very good at that. I have to look through online resources to come up with names for stories or for clinical uh, cases and stuff. Uh, I don't know why I decided, like, a military background. I don't know if this was, like, a picture thing again. Um, but I went with military. I went with marrying off. I went with, like... Oh, well, I want the estate and all this stuff, even though back then I didn't really understand like what I was really writing. I just thought it sounded interesting. It makes for the perfect dynamic. Like, oh, she doesn't want to get married. She still wants to act like, you know, a kid. Um, I'm guessing she was, she was 18 because, you know, she, <clears throat> I wish I acted 18 instead of five. So she still wants to be young and her father wants to see her grow up and be mature. So. Uh, this would be something interesting. I don't know if I'd continue writing about it because I feel like there's a lot more detail I would have to add. Um, but I, don't know. I thought it was interesting, and the teacher's notes was also interesting. Like where I wrote uh, about the summer blue dress and no shoe part. Uh, I guess I just wrote summer dress, but then I went back and wrote blue, and then in the purple, the teacher wrote, "Yeah, more details." So I guess that was pretty interesting to find.
uh, the final and third prompt I wanted to share was uh, written February 24th, 2010, and this just had I blank. It's just I blank. So that was kind of our prompt was we had, I think she had a chalkboard or a whiteboard, and it just had the I and then a blank, and then we were to fill in the blank. So this is what I wrote. <clears throat> so I love you. Those three words can mean a lot. It can save lives, bring happiness, or show that you care about someone. Whenever people think of love, they think of hearts and funny looking cupids. Today, however, I felt like love left me. It all started this morning at breakfast. Me, my dad, my sister, and two brothers were sitting at the table. Mama was cooking, yet there was no conversation going on. There was no fighting among my parents like they had been the last few days, nor with me and my siblings. Sometimes my older brother would tell us a dream he had the night before. My brother is truly a dreamer, not in sleep, but also with his goals. With the sound of bacon crackling and birds singing their praise in the early sunlight, all was silent in the house. Not a word was whispered. Dad didn't even tell Mom I love you or how he needed to watch his weight. Just silence. After breakfast, I was about to head out when Mom stopped me. Poor Mom. She looked tired. Honey, I need to explain something to you, she said. I knew it had to have, have been of importance. No way would she have stopped me before going on the bus any other day. She took a deep breath. Anna, your father and I are thinking about splitting up. Boom, she dropped it like a bomb on my heart. It immediately exploded as pain shot through every vein. But I couldn't get the rest of the words out. Mom and dad have been married for 20 years. It got me thinking. Did they run out of I love yous? She, sa she sighed in the pale sunlight. It's just a separation for a little while so he can get his act together. I couldn't move, yet I asked, do the others know? She shook her head. I wanted to see your reaction since you were clo close to the both of us. It was true. I was mommy's girl and daddy's little angel. There was a horn. Better go catch your bus, I, but I ran out before she could say it. I ran to the bus without stopping and managed to grab a seat by myself. I was glad my one friend Casey wasn't on. It gave me some time to think. Mom and Dad did not love each other anymore. Is that what they, what the fights were about? That they now hated one another with deep passion? They couldn't see each other anymore? Then a thought struck me. Who will move first? Who will get the kids? I hope I'll still go to the same school instead of moving to a brand new school in the middle of the semesters. I had a four-day four, four day weekend coming up, and most of that time will be focused on schoolwork. We arrived at school, and I felt like nothing. Nothing could cheer me up. Not the sight of the sun, the late Christmas signs on teachers' doors, my friends. <clears throat> my heart lifted a moment when I saw my boyfriend, yet I became gloomy again at the thought of my parents. We didn't hug or kiss in public, for we were both shy. Yet he smiled, and I lost myself. The corners of my mouth lifted into a grin but he saw the pain in my eyes. What's wrong, he asked, standing by my locker. We were near the back of the school. I didn't want to talk about it, but if I didn't soon, he wouldn't want to talk to me or get mad. <clears throat> I looked into his baby blue eyes and felt tears come in mine. My parents are separating, and with that, tears flowed down my cheeks. He looked around and gave me a hug. I caught a whiff of his cologne and heard him say, I'm sorry, yet it didn't sound like it. I pulled away. He was smiling. What kind of person would laugh at that? Furious, I slammed the locker door shut. Calm down, he said. And the piece ends there. <clears throat> that was a bit longer. Uh, almost took you know, two and a half pages worth. <clears throat> so this, uh, the teacher had written towards the end that I could turn this into a really strong piece. And I definitely agree. I think I wanted to turn it into like a little short novel or something uh once <clears throat> once i had the freedom from the creative writing class and didn't have 10 other things to write about maybe like that summer or something you know to turn it into a strong piece but i never really did um i remember i typed it up for some reason like i made fixes like you know the whole dreamer part this is a really beautiful line especially the parts I underline, you know, truly a dreamer, not in, in sleep, but with his goals. I think I wanted to change goals with something else. Like, I think the whole point was, like, you know, her, bro her brother, like, 
was like a dreamer in sleep and had like these really cool dreams and stuff but not only was it in sleep but it was also in real life so uh that was just something i kind of played with in a way um I definitely play a lot with imagery, you know, bird singing, bacon crackling. I think these are just images, you know, I've always pictured mornings that I wanted to go, like, not so much, you know, the whole point of, like, my parents coming up to me and saying, Jen, we're gonna separate, like, that would not be good at all, but, <clears throat> uh, but the boom dropped that on my heart, uh, that was something, like, instead of just immediately reacting, it's just, like, internally, like, inside, it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And then, uh, did they run out of I love yous? Uh, the teacher hi uh, er, bleh, underlined that and said, again, you really get into the mind of your character. Of course, that's something I've always done. It's like, if I'm not my own character, then I've got to figure out, like, what are they thinking? What are they doing? That's really a hard piece to get into. Uh, and then the back and forth between the mom and, and the daughter, trying to figure out, like, well, what's going to happen? You know, I haven't told anyone. Uh, and then the boyfriend part, I think I wanted to just end it there because there's an underline from where she's sitting on the bus thinking and all that. Because it was like four day weekend, like gonna focus on school, that doesn't really make any sense. But then it was like, I arrived at school and all this. So maybe I like, I underlined it because I was like, well, maybe I'll start a different piece. But then I was like, no, I'll keep going and thinking. And for some reason she has a boyfriend who's shy, she's shy too. Um... But yeah, so that was an interesting piece. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed this month's video. Um, let me know what you thought about the prompts, maybe if I should continue writing, if I have the time to write out a little bit here or there. Um, maybe share some of your prompts. You know, do you enjoy creative writing? I loved it so much that I took it again in college. And that was a different story because the professor's like, well, yeah, it's such, such so hard to get an A in this class with creative writing um, and whatnot. And I passed with an A. So if I can find those ones, I think the poems I wrote uh, for the creative writing class in college turned out really good. If I can find them, I'll definitely share them. So, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you have a great day and stay safe and I will see you in next month's video.